Hey Tony, it's Friday, and first off, to answer your question of the week, this is going to sound a little silly, but I think the show that had the most impact on, yes Jay, I see your bunny ears, but a show that had a great impact on the music I listened to was actually What's New Scooby-Doo? Because uh, that's when I, I so that's one of the first times I really heard Simple Plan, and Simple Plan was really like my gateway into rock and roll, compared to, you know, the pop we listened to when we were kids. So, what I want to talk about this week, you're lucky. I was actually going to make a really boring, really complicated video on the economy and stimulus checks. But I decided that literally nobody cares. Nope. So instead I'm going to talk, you know, a little less serious about a pretty interesting topic that it's entirely because of some podcasts I've been listening to lately. But what I want to talk about is why people love outlaw stories. And by outlaw stories, I mean, you know, stories that range from Robin Hood to pirates to the cowboys of the Old West and the bushrangers of, of, us, of Australia. They're, almost every single culture has had a story that glorified an outlaw life in some way, shape, or form. Which is really interesting because outlaws, by their very nature, are considered a... Uh, I'm going to totally butcher this Latin... But it was a uh, domus es humanus, enemies of the entire human race. And I'm pretty sure I totally butchered that, that Latin pronunciation, and people in the comments will yell at me for that. Um, but it's an interesting back and forth, because pirates and outlaws are people who, by very definition, have chosen to not be of a country. Because, especially pirates, it's all international waters, and going back to the Roman times there was the very idea of free waters. And we see that still, like, <clears throat> in our stories of the Wild West. Think of the stories that you know, that you grew up hearing about. Your Jesse Jameses, your Butch Cassidy's, and other things like that. And, like, you know, the death of uh, Wild, Bill Wild Bill Hickok. And a lot of these are, you know, stories of outlaw gangs who, you know, were, by all intents and purposes, brutal murderers and criminals. Pirates were brutal murderers and criminals. Your bushrangers of Australia were brutal robbers, murderers, and criminals. But in the same regard, we as a culture and we as just a, a people, like humans all over the place, always glorify their outlaw tales, at least in part. And it's kind of interesting as to, at least my ideas as to why we do that. So my initial thought is really that there are a few things that we look, that we can kind of look at with outlaw tales that allow us to romanticize them. It's the very idea of like this is a group of anarchics of anarchists going around like not letting not letting the laws of humanity take bring them down or anything like that. And there's also just kind of a a little mysticism about these are people who could have lived good regular honest lives they chose not to was it because they were inherently bad was that because circumstances made them so or is it something that's even more interesting i it might be the term for it but these tales are ones that are told all over the place i mean again like i mentioned robin hood earlier that's one of the very first tales of someone who is by all intents and purposes an outlaw because although you know uh, prince john and the sheriff of nottingham are by de very definition, the villains of that story, you kind of see them and go, okay, they're people who are following the law and Robin Hood himself is the one who doesn't. And it leads to kind of an interesting back and forth with humans as a whole. Especially, like, since we've become more um, urbanized, more uh, centralized, there's a social contract, there's a social agreement that most of us will, you know, Go throughout our days, follow the law, not cause problems. And that's just the general process. And our outlaws completely, completely just defy that. They go, they do whatever they can to get out of that realm. And it's just something I find fascinating. Now, I listen to a lot of podcasts about pirates. I listen to a lot of podcasts about Wild West Outlaws. I've seen a lot of movies about both. And I've watched a lot of shows about both. Played a lot of games. And it's kind of interesting because I am by very definition, a law-abiding citizen. I'm a lawyer. I'm required to follow the law or else I lose my entire career. 
But even I still kind of, if not glorified, because again, they were all brutal murderers and criminals, I at least romanticize in part some of these stories we hear. Like, I think of uh, Red Dead Redemption, which was a great game, one that I really enjoyed, and that was an outlaw tale. You're playing as Arthur Morgan, who is, again, the very definition of an outlaw. And the entire story is a back and forth of the, the world is the world is civilizing around us and we can't just run out into the woods anymore and our way of life is dying, which is kind of a romantic notion as well. And I think a lot of it goes back to like, as the world has become more centralized, as our authorities become more centralized, you kind of have that inherent human desire to maybe, maybe I don't want to be the, maybe I don't want to be another cog in the machine. Maybe I want to do something extraordinary and be outside the realms of my boring everyday life. And it's just fascinating. I think it's also why a lot of anti-hero stories are very popular. I mean, Punisher is an absolute anti-hero, but he himself is also an outlaw. He breaks the law now. Yes, he has his own moral code about it, but he breaks the law. Red Dead Redemption, I mentioned Arthur Morgan and John Marston and the entire Vanderlyn gang. They all broke the law because they wanted to stay away from, you know, this esoteric man. And it's just kind of... We always tell these stories throughout all of humanity of these honorable outlaws, these people who say no to the world around them. And it's just, it's not true, but we still just love the tales no matter what. So, Tony, my question for you, what are some of your favorite outlaw tales? Tony, I'll see you on Monday. Later, bro.